All right. I got this on display. Uh-oh. Must have uh, changed it. Bam. Uh-oh. There we go. There it is. <clears throat> there it is. Let me just uh, pull this out. All right. How's everybody doing today? It's kind of an awkward uh, entrance, you know. It's like... It's coming to come out here like, hi, I'm Pastor Andrew, how you doing? Well, uh, my name is Pastor Andrew, and uh, recently um, I've been promoted to the leading the groups at small, uh, Two Rivers Church, so if you want to get involved in a group, if you want to start a group, a group could be something simple as playing basketball with your friends, it could be Bible studies, it could be prayer groups, it could be cooking, it could be whatever you like to do, we can make a group for it, and then you could do community with people from church. Sounds like a good idea, right? So that's kind of what's happening. Uh, I'd love to see that grow. Um, so if you're interested in doing that or would like to join one, you could either go to two rivers church dot, or two rivers dot church or come see me after service. Uh, I'd love to plug you guys in and uh, see groups started, man. It's pretty cool. that This will be a church of groups that when you come here on Sunday, be like, man, I know that person. That person's in my group. That's my boy. That's, that's my home girl, you know? Like, so uh, it just really builds relationships. You really get to know people and live life together. So um, without further ado, um, you know, we're, we're at, the, at the movies series today, and we're doing uh, one of my favorite series. It's uh, Star Wars. How many here like Star Wars? <laughs> I was, I was definitely digging Jurassic, Jurassic World last week, you know, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World is definitely uh, my, my favorite movies, and uh, well, anyway, we're going to be doing The Force Awakens today, and uh, I'm going to show you a clip, so take your uh, attention to the screen. So this is where I'm going to go with this. Um, how many here have seen that movie? Okay, good, because we're going to show a spoiler about halfway through the sermon, so... Um, <laughs> one of the most key parts of the movie, but uh, did you hear what he said? That was Han Solo. Um, Han Solo is like a legend from the early Star Wars movies, and uh, he's been through like, you know, all these different crazy battles, and you know, he, he's seen Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader and all these people, and um, through the, the early movies, um, he, he actually thought like the Jedi, the Force, he thought all that stuff was mumbo jumbo. He just thought it was like, yeah, all right. There's no such thing as a force. There's no way you can like, you know, do the Darth Vader doing the force choke or whatever. Like all that stuff is just myth or folklore. And so, so he was a doubter in the first movies. But if we just looked at that 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 last uh, clip, um, Ray and Finn, they're the new Padawans, the younglings um, in the new Star Wars movie, and they're asking Han Solo like. The Jedi, the Force, the dark side, is this stuff really real? Is this stuff actually, did this actually happen um, in your time? And, and, and he, he's looking at them, and, and from this point of view, he, he's actually be able to tell them that, you know what, it's real. I, I've experienced it. I've seen it with my own eyes. That the, the Force is real. The dark side's real. The, the Jedi really happened. Like, I hung out with Luke Skywalker. You know, we were on a ship together. We were in the galactic battles and all these different things. And these young, these young Padawans were coming up and they're just thinking, like, all this stuff, you know, it just sounds like storytelling. It just sounds like something your parents would tell you and a, 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 a nighttime story before you go to bed. But, but Han Solo said it's real. I'm not saying for y'all here that the Jedi are real, the Force is real. I'm going somewhere with this, and, and I know the people watching online, they're probably like, what is he preaching from the book of Star Wars? What kind of hypocrisy, apostasy are they preaching here? But no, come on now. So no, I'm, gonna, I'm using this uh, film for an illustration, and that's what we're using the God at the, mo or the, at the movie series is we're going to show movies to illustrate points. So with that being said... How many here read the Bible, understand the Christian faith, and just, just ask yourself, is this stuff real? Is Jesus real? Is God real? Did, did, did he literally walk on water? Did he, did he pray over demon-possessed people and cast out demons? Did he, did he heal the sick? Was he really crucified? Like, the stuff that we're reading in the Bible, there's just some... 
you know, cover to cover, there's just miracles after miracles after miracles, just impossible things happening. Is it real? Is it true? I, I, I want to I bring up the scripture because we preach from the word here at Two Rivers. So if you got your Bibles, turn to uh, 2 Peter 6, 1, 16 through 19. And this is the Apostle Peter speaking. He says, for we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we um, made known. So check that out. This isn't some, the Bible's not just tales. It's not just folklore. It's not just imaginary land, like, which just make up a bunch of stuff and confuse millions of people. But check this out. To you, the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power. They experienced the power of Jesus Christ. They literally seen him there. There are people that will say Jesus never existed historically. They'll say it's just a, maybe a copy off of Horus or some other mythological deity or whatever. But, but check this out. They have witnessed the power of Jesus Christ. They witnessed the coming of the Lord Jesus. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. That these, these disciples, they walked with Jesus, they talked with Jesus, they seen him do impossible things that they, 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 they saw with their own eyes. This wasn't just some folklore passed down from generation to generation that they actually got to see it firsthand. They, they witnessed it. And like when you go to court, you know, you, see, you witness a crime. They're not going to put somebody on the stand that wasn't even there. Like, oh, yeah, I heard from this person, from that person that this happened. No, they put people that were eyewitnesses on the stand, and they testify what they saw. In most cases, sometimes people lie on the stand. But anyway, we're not going to go there. But check this out. So, so Jesus, the Bible, everything that is written in there, it's It's real. I mean, there are, uh, there is poetry, there are things that are imagery, you know, you definitely got to discern how, to, how you read the scriptures and the context, but there's so much stuff in here that, that literally happened. So, so I want to talk to you from, uh, sorry, let me just, there we go. There we go, sweet. It's behind the back works. I want to talk to you guys, uh, some things that I was an eyewitness to. You know, um, I remember being a kid, I was about seven years old, and just leading up to it, like my mom would always talk about church and God, and we would go to church, we'd actually, you know, um, be a part of it all the time, and I just, I never believed it, you know what I mean? I was just like, oh, here we go, we're praying again, like, this, this lady's crazy, like, why are we praying, you know, and, and just like, not really getting it, but I remember one distinct time in my life, I was in the kitchen with my mother, and we sat down together. We opened up the Bible, and we were praying. And I just remember for the first time in my life feeling the presence of God. Like, I remember just holding my hands out, and, like, I couldn't move my hands. Like, I just felt like this, this thing, this force, this something that was there. I'm not saying God's a force. God is a person. But I felt the presence of God for the first time, and I'm like, this is real to me. This, this, this is something that we just don't talk about. This isn't some folklore. This is real to me. And, and just ever since that, you know, I've always had a good understanding of God, and I had a really solid relationship with the Lord growing up. And just, just watching, uh, just lit there's things happening. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, the dark side, because we're going to get to that. The Bible talks about here, we'll get there. Boom. Sorry, guys. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians 6, 12. I'm going to prove it in Scripture. It says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but enemies, and against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Like a lot of times we, we pick these battles with people, and, and literally there's there's a lot of demonic activity that's happening in the unseen world and against mighty powers of the dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. That, that the, the battle that we're going through, that there's some real stuff happening. It's not just what you can see with your eyes. And, and in America, we live in a world that is all physical. Like if, if, it, if it can't be weighed or measured, it doesn't exist. How many here believe that? 
You know, if, if you can't, you know, if it, if it can't be weighed or measured, you know. Um, there, I'm, I just really, my, my point of this sermon today is just to have an awakening, to, to, to really talk to you guys and let you know that there is really another thing happening. There's a spiritual battle going on that you can't see with your own eyes. But, but it's real. It's, it's a real thing. Like, God is real. You can't see God. You know what I mean? Like, God, just reveal yourself right now and we'll see you. You know, you can't see God with your own eyes. But <clears throat> So we're, we're, I want to talk to you, um, you know, in the, script, in the scripture it talks about we have this battle. This, this, we're wrestling against flesh and blood, uh, not against flesh and blood, but principalities and rulers of high places. That there's this war going on. And um, even in the movie... Han Solo's like the dark side. It's real. Like, like he he went through it. He he, he actually uh, seen battles. You know what I mean. He's seen Darth Vader do some crazy stuff. And uh, I, I just want to talk to you from my own eyewitness account of of some stuff that I I witnessed when I was a young kid. I was about 13 years old. And uh, and this 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 story is going to be pretty crazy. Like, you know, it's not your your normal story that you would hear from somebody. But I just want to be real with you. I want to tell you what I saw. I'm not making any of this up. Um, I, I had a friend that we, we were hanging out together, and we're about to camp out a summer night. And, uh, you know, he got caught up into all kinds of demonic stuff, man. He was he was practicing to become a, a warlock, and he was into the occult and Ouija boards and tarot card readings and all kinds of uh, things like that nature. And um, he was just really, like, pressing this thing, like, the thing that I believe is real, the thing that I, I, I devote my life to is real, and Christianity is fake, it's false, blah, blah, blah. And I remember we were supposed to camp out that night, and we got into the tent, and he, he pulls out a Ouija board. I'm just like, whoa, like, I know that stuff's demonic. I'm not, I'm not touching that. It's not, you know, a game. It's, it's like this guy's, like, talking to these things, and you know, it was just pretty crazy. Like, he was talking to, like, spirits. Um, he would ask it questions, and it, it would answer, like, every question that he was asking it. Don't do this. Don't go out and do that. But check this out. So I'm just like, whatever. Like, you know, he kept agging me on. You know when you're a teenager and somebody keeps pressuring you? Like, you got to do this. You got to do that. Like, he's like, listen. He's like, I want to prove to you my, my God's real and yours isn't. You know, and I'm a young believer. I'm on fire for the Lord. I've been, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit at a young age. Like, I was really strong in my faith. And, um, you know, so I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to back down from this guy. So, you know, stupidly enough, I joined him on the Ouija board. And he, he's doing the thing. He's asking it questions. It's answering. I'm like, everything he asks it. And I'm like, whatever. I'll, I'll ask it a question. And it didn't even say anything to me. It kept going to goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. It wouldn't even talk to me. So... Uh, he, he, he asked this thing, it's like, what, what, why don't you talk to my friend Andy? And on the Ouija board, it spelt out G-O-D. And he's like, whoa. So he's like, is Andy's God real? And it went to yes. And I'm like, there you go, brother. <laughs> Boom! Like, I felt like Elijah. <laughs> uh, uh, I felt like Elijah on Mark, Mount Carmel, like, boom, like, bring all your prophets and false prophecies. My God's going to respond by fire. So, uh, man, so, so it was crazy. So that, that's only part of the story. So, like, we, we left the tent. I'm like, listen, put that thing away. I'm not doing that no more. Like, we don't need to go there. And we're just having a normal conversation. We end up going on his, his uh, front porch, like on this uh, swing or whatever, just talking. We had a nice conversation for like an hour, just regular teenager talk. And then boom, he, he, he just went into a trance for 10 minutes. Like literally his voice dropped. He was unresponsive. He wasn't comprehending anything I was saying. He was just like speaking all this weird stuff. Like he's like, I remember one of the things he said, like his voice dropped. He's like, you were a sheep about to be devoured by wolves. And he said, the prince of the air is here. And this kid's like 15, 14 also. Like, he's not going to know all this Bible stuff. Like, the prince of the air is uh, referring to the uh, to Satan in the Bible. Like, how is he going to know this stuff? Like, he's, he's saying things that, like, no 14-year-old should know. And uh, this thing had complete control over his, his body. And don't look, don't watch Paranormal Activity, but... Uh, if you have seen that movie, um, that's pretty an accurate description of like what I was 
seeing with my own eyes. And I know this sounds so crazy, but, you know, I was like, I was telling him, like, listen, dude, like, snap out of this. Like, I was shaking him. He wouldn't, he wouldn't snap out of it. I slapped him in the face, like, bang, like, wake up. What is wrong with you? Like, you're talking crazy. Like, and this is the first time I've ever seen somebody possessed. So eventually at the last slap, he just like looked shocking. He's like, dude, why did you slap me? I thought that was your friend. You know, like, you, why did you hit me? You're mean and mean. Like, and I'm like, man, did you just hear what you were saying for 10 minutes? Like, he's like, what are you talking about? Like, he had no idea. He brought up the exact conversation we were having before that. Like, like that whole 10 minutes never happened. So I'm like, whoa, <laughs> uh, you're possessed, dude. I am not sleeping in that tent with you tonight. I'm walking home. It's like midnight. I'm going to walk home, and I just start walking down this street. And then he starts running after me. He's like, Andy, don't go. <laughs> I don't want to be left in the tent by myself. I'm like, oh, man, what kind of friend would leave their friend like that? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I come back in the tent. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, do not use the Ouija board. Anything you have, like, the mind, you sleep on that side of the tent, I'm going to sleep over here, you know. And uh, you know, just, just in case he gets crazy, I have my fists all ready, you know. Um, we'll go from slaps to fists. Um, well, anyway, we're, we're, we're just talking and everything. And then he went into the trance again. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is going on? He just starts talking all this crazy demonic stuff. So I just said, Lord, I repent for using this Ouija board. I, I, I give my life to you, Lord. I need you right now. I need you to, to get rid of this thing because he's just like growling. He's doing all this crazy stuff. So I laid my hands on him and I said, in Jesus' name, I command you to leave. And instantly, like, he, he just started like freaking out. He was screaming. He's like, get your hands off me, like in that deep voice. And um, well, eventually about five minutes or so, I just kept praying and like, you know, telling him to leave. And, you know, eventually he said like, He's like, man, he's like, they're gone now, but they're going to come back seven times more. And that's a reference in the Bible um, when something's cast out, it comes back with seven more wicked demons than the other. So it's just crazy that he knew this stuff, but it wasn't him. So anyway, cast the demons out. But I'm like, next day, you know, I left. I went back to my house. I'm like, probably not going to hang out with this guy for a while. And uh, well, anyway, he came, he resurfaced about a week later. And he was, like, so involved in this, this thing. Like, he was having, like, full-blown conversations, blah, blah, blah. But he called me up, and he's like, man, I, I want to get out of this. I don't, I don't want to keep living like this. I'm being tormented. I'm being just, I can't sleep at night. These things keep bugging me, like, and, and just, he's just going crazy with this, this thing bothering him. So I'm like, come over to my house. Me and my mom will pray for you, and, and, and just bring all your stuff. Like, we got to get rid of it. Like, you're not going to be doing this anymore. You got to, if you're going to repent, you're going to turn your whole life around. You're not going to go back to the, the Ouija boards and all that. So he came over, me and my mom prayed for him, completely cast all the stuff out, said, in Jesus' name. And it was just so amazing that he was free from it. Like, like everything changed about him. He was just glowing. Like, it's just an awesome experience. But we, we burned all his stuff. Like, like if you want to get rid of this, you want to change, you want to follow Jesus, like, you can't go back to that lifestyle anymore. So we burned all that stuff, just like in the book of Acts, when all the, the people that were in the, the sorcery and everything, they came and they burned all their material. Um, we burned it, and it was the craziest thing. Like, the, 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 the fire and the smoke was, like, bluish green, and, like, you could hear, like, screams coming from it. It was just such the most craziest thing I've uh, seen. So I'm just telling you, I've seen possessed people um, probably about seven to eight in my lifetime. So I'm not saying every single person, like, okay, you have this problem, so you must be possessed. Get it. Get the demon out. No, nothing like that. But realistically, like, I don't see it all the time. But I, I've seen it over and over again where it's like, wow, this, this, this wasn't just a one-time occurrence. And I don't go looking for it. Don't go looking out there. Don't go be like ghost hunters. Like, we've got to go in this room and, and, and find them and... You know what I mean? Don't be that person. Um, but we live in a world that this kind of stuff is not happening all the time. And, and if they do believe in the spiritual realm, it's all about like ghosts and like the, the, the unhealthy way of, you know, and they, and they start seeking after ghosts or demons or whatever. And uh, it becomes unhealthy. But seek God. You know what I mean? Seek God. God is awesome. You don't need that kind of stuff in your life. And uh, Cody, are you ready, brother? I'm gonna, we're going to play a clip we're going to play a clip from uh, the Star Wars movie, and then we'll continue on. 
So what was the point of that? I just wanted to show you that. I just wanted to spoil the movie for you guys. No, but on a real note, the, the darkness, the uh, demonic forces uh, can definitely torment you just like it was Kylo Ren and could actually turn you to the point where you, you kill your own dad, which is pretty crazy. But uh, enough with the dark side. I want to talk about the, the force or the Jedi, the good parts. How about that? You guys ready for some good stuff? <clears throat> so let me clarify one thing. I'm not saying God is a force. He's actually a person. He's the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So I just want to clarify that right off the bat, that we don't believe in some mystical force, but it's, it's God. He's spirit. Um, so um, to getting into this, uh, I, I want to share a few eyewitness things that I've seen what God's done in my life. And, and, and just even from a, a young age, feeling the presence of God, knowing that he was real, that there was something beyond the physical realm. And uh, I just want to talk about, and, and like some of you here today may, may read in the Bible and you just see like, these miracles take place, and you're like, can God really heal the sick? Can God really do miracles today? And um, that's something that I struggled with. Um, you know, I'd go and I'd pray for somebody. I'd pray for a loved one on their deathbed and, and don't see anything. Like, it was just nothing happened, you know, over and over again. And I'm just like, is this really ha Like, can it happen? Like, I, I read it in the Bible, and uh, we'll get to the scripture that I'm referring to. Is Matthew 16, 15 through 18, if you have your Bibles, turn there. And it says, and, they, and then he told them to go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. And anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, and anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. And check this part out. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in a new language. Sorry. Double click. They will be able to handle snakes safely. Don't do it. Leave it. Leave the snakes at home, guys. It's not that kind of church. And there's a referral to this. This is referring to what's going to happen. And Paul got bit by a poisonous snake and axe, and he didn't die. So that's what it's referring to. And some crazy Christians out in the backwoods of Kentucky will be like, hey, man, we're going we're gonna to play with snakes because the Bible said it. No, don't do it. Um, and if you, if you drink anything poisonous, it will not hurt, harm them. And check this out. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. And I, I, the scripture, like I'm just dwelling on the scripture and I go and pray for people over and over again and I, I just didn't see miracles. I didn't see anybody healed. And then the scripture really got a hold of my, my life and I was just like, man, this is what the word says. So I pray for somebody and they didn't get healed. But it doesn't matter. I believe God can still heal people today and that he's able to. And, and eventually I remember just being at a Sunday school at church, and I was, I was teaching on healing, and this kid came up with his shoulder that he could barely, he couldn't even lift it up. That's as far as he could do. He's, he was a pitcher for Vestal, and, and he, couldn't, he couldn't lift his arm up because of his shoulder injury. And uh, we just had all the teens pray for him, and we said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And then all of a sudden, he's like, ready to pitch again. We're like, throw this kid a ball. He's ready to go. Nine innings. And uh, he was healed instantly, and all the kids in the and the group were like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. This is real. Like, this is so amazing. And then I remember uh, another crazy, like, so, so I kept praying for people. I'm like, God, you can heal anybody. I had this belief that God could heal people. And uh, I'm telling you, I'm not joking. There was at least nine people. Every single person that I prayed for was healed instantly. Nine for nine. God, like, as we prayed and laid hands on people, they were healed one of the awesome stories of, and within that nine, uh, and I, I, I could talk for hours, but my time's coming short. Um, this lady had a stroke, and she wasn't able to move her arm for a whole year, just like li literally like like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, just stuck at the side, like you know couldn't move it. And uh, you know I came over there and I prayed for her. I said, "In Jesus' name, be healed." And she, you know just kept praying for her, kept praying for her, and then eventually she was like lifting her arm up and she's an older lady too she was like raising the roof like jump in like her family's like oh my goodness what just happened this is awesome and uh, i've seen it with my own eyes i've seen it i know it's real i know god can do it um 
I've also seen him not be able, I'm not saying he can't heal people, but eventually when you're in heaven, you won't have any problems with health. So ultimately, you will be healed. But it is possible to see it today. It is, it is possible. And uh, check this out. So you may ask yourself, how come I don't see healings? I don't see miraculous things happen. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry, verse 15 this is, this is the command. He says, he told them to go into all the world and preach the good news. Like, you're going you're gonna to see miracles. And that was my problem. I'd I be praying from afar. I'd be at my home like, Lord God, and God can't answer prayers. You don't have to be in the room. God is everywhere. But I wasn't engaged in sharing the gospel. I wasn't uh, actively trying to reach people. But it says, to those who go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. But when I started going to my work and, and praying for people on my lunch break and leading people to the Lord in my car and, and just going out there and sharing the good news that Jesus can save, Jesus is alive, Jesus is real, that's when I started seeing miracles take place. He's not just going to be like, here, do this miracle, and everybody's going to be like, oh, look at what this person can do. No. The point of miracles is to accompany the word of God. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the point of miracles is to, to reveal who Christ is, that he's alive, that he's real, that it's true. Just how Han Solo said, it is true that all this stuff happened. This God can really heal people. And if you want to see that happen in your life, go minister to somebody. Go down the street and talk to somebody about Jesus. I'm sure... I'm sure if you come in contact with enough people, you'll find somebody that needs healing, and they will be healed. Just believe it. It's, these signs are for those who believes. Do you believe it? Or are you just still caught up in this, it's only physical world. We live in a material world. You know, whatever that song is. That there's more than just what meets the eye. Don't get me singing. You don't want to hear it. But praise God, a miracle. I could barely talk uh, after Thursday. I've come down with a sickness and my throat was gone. I'm like, oh, Lord, let me be able to preach Sunday. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna close this down. So here's the steps you can take today. This is something that you can do today. Believe God is real and be able to do the impossible. Do you believe God can do it? Do you believe God can heal the sick? Do you believe God can save your life? Do you believe God can save your marriage? Do you believe that your kids can come back to the Lord? God can do impossible things. I could go on and on and on and how God has changed my life. I shouldn't be up here preaching today. I should be still stuck in drugs and alcohol. And that's what my life was like for 12 years, almost every single day. But God got a hold of my heart. He changed my life. He did the impossible. He became so real to me. And I said, how can I not live 100% for this? How can I not live every day on fire for God, trying to reach the lost? Because I know if God can change my life, he can change your life. And if he can restore my family, he can restore your family. And if we could have the worship team come up and um, start playing in the background, we're about to, about to get this to the close. Uh, the second thing is be baptized with the Holy Spirit. This is the empowerment. If you read Acts 1.8, it says, Go into Jerusalem and he will send, you will, you will receive power. You'll receive power from the Holy Spirit. And that's what you need. If you're not seeing a lot of miracles, maybe you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet. And what happened is they, 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 they waited on the Lord. They seeked his face and they started speaking in tongues and just the empowerment of God from heaven just empowered them. And Peter, when he was um, when he seen the, the crucified Christ, he, he ran and hid and he actually... Uh, uh, denied Christ three times. So once he got empowered by the Holy Spirit, he stood up right there and preached the gospel boldly and was able to see many people come to the Lord just that day. And, and many other times he's seen healings and miracles and um, just became more empowered to do so. The next point you could do is pray often and with power. So pray often. Pray to God throughout the week. Don't just come Sunday and just pray once and, and then go on your week. Have a relationship with God. Speak to God. That God, this is what I'm going through. This is the things that's happening in my life. I need you. And it's a relationship. God is a relationship. It's not, it's not just some force out there in, in, in the galactic, but it's a God that literally stepped down from all the glory in heaven and paid the price for all of our sin. 
and, 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 and cut the veil in, in half. The thing, that, the thing that was blocking us from relationship with a holy God was sin, and he died for our sin, and he bridged the gap. And that you can have a relationship with a holy God. So pray with them, and then pray with power. When you pray for people, pray with power. Pray, pray that God's going to show up today. That God's going to do miracles. And I believe that in a few minutes we're going to have an altar call. And uh, if you want to come up, I'm gonna, we're going to have a prayer team up here. We're going to be praying for people. Number four, tell somebody the impossible things God has, has, that you have seen God do. Just like I shared today, I could share like a whole day's worth of stuff, probably a whole week's worth of stuff of things that God has done that is impossible. And you can share these. And I'm telling you, if you're trying to reach your friends, don't try to debate with them all these theological concepts. Tell them what God has done in your life that's impossible. I've, I've won more atheists to God with sharing testimonies of what God did that was impossible than just trying to debate with somebody. Because he's going to show up. He's awesome. So if you guys want to come up here, we're going we're to shut this down. There's a scripture, I'm not going to pull it up, but there's a scripture where, where Jesus is asking Peter, he says, who do people say that I am? And he, he names off a few people. And then Jesus asks him, he's like, who do you say that I am? And Jesus said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Peter, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven did. That there's no, nothing on earth could reveal this to you. And some people here today just need a fresh revelation of who God really is. That he's drawn people. It's not by what the things that I say that can get you to believe in God. It's by him revealing himself to you in a way that is powerful. That is out of this world. So if that's you today and you say, you know what? I've heard a lot of stories today. I want to know this Christ. I want to know this God that you speak of. I don't want to be like Han Solo and just doubting and say it's all just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But I want God to reveal himself. And God will reveal himself to you today. He says, if you seek me with your whole hearts, you will find me. God is not up in heaven saying, oh man, somebody wants to know me, let me hide and, and, and then make sure they, they don't believe me. No, if you want to know God, he is willing to make himself known to you today. Just like when I was a seven-year-old boy in the kitchen, I said, God, I want to know you. I just don't want to think this is some mumbo jumbo. I want to know you. Is this real? Is this true? If that's you today, I, I want you to, of every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you today, say, you know what, Jesus, I want to know you for real. I want this to be real in my life. I want to know you. I want to make you Lord of my life today. Slip up your hand. I see those hands. I see it. Thank you, Jesus. And if you want to know more about that, we're going to pray a prayer in a second, but if you want to know more about that, we have a Fresh Start banner over there, and uh, somebody's going to be able to share the gospel with you and give you a Bible and, and explain these things to you. So let's all pray this prayer together, church. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. I have sinned. I'm not perfect, but Jesus, you are. Forgive me. Change me. Make me brand new. I will follow you for the rest of my days. Reveal yourself to me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for those guys. Come on now. Could we all stand up? Could we all stand up? I want to have people come up front. We're almost out of time, so I want to have people come up if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you want God to reveal himself to you in a powerful way that, that that's more than just an intellectual knowledge of Jesus, come forward. If you want prayer for anything, if you need prayer for healing, come forward. If you're battling some kind of thing where you just can't break free, like you're constantly going through some kind of... Uh, spiritual attack come forward and for everybody else um you know there's coffee in the back and, and you're, you're welcome to leave this is like your dismissal 
But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray a blessing upon everybody. And if you want prayer for all those things, or it could be something else that I didn't mention, come forward. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are on the throne. That whatever we go through, whatever demonic forces come our way, that you are greater, Lord God. That you defeated death, you defeated sin, you defeated Satan, Lord God. And we pray for your power to rest in this place today, Lord God. That you were real, that you were alive. And I just pray that the, an awakening happens here at Two Rivers Church. That they will be aware of the amazing things that you do, Lord. That you're a God that is full of love and compassion. That you're a God that is constantly seeking after people, Lord. And you want us to rise up to be like Jedi, to be warriors in this world, to go out into the whole world and preach the good news to every single person that we can do this. But I just pray a blessing upon every single person here today. In Jesus' name, amen.